Welcome back to Fast Break. I think I finally recovered from the anniversary on Saturday. You guys were awesome. That was so fun. We had so many people. We had people lined up. I want to say the first guy was lined up at 7 o'clock. So, Brad, kudos to you for your commitment there. So, that was great. But we're not here to talk about the anniversary today. We'll, be, we'll probably do a video um, showing you guys some pictures of that day, maybe a little bit of video, and uh, just to show you how fun it was from our end. So, it was very cool. But today... Beckett order came in, and I'm really excited about this because there's two Jordan rookies in this, and I'm really hoping that they both come back graded because some of the ones we've sent in have had questionable authenticity. And I know Beckett's trying to, you know, separate themselves from some of the fakes that are out there. So some that are real, I know they're coming back as questionable because if they ever were proven to be fake, Beckett just doesn't want their name on that label. So I, I get it on their end. There's a lot of fakes out there, but there's two of them in here, so... Hopefully, we're good. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what's in here. There's some really cool stuff. I know, if I remember right, that was sent off about four months ago, probably. I think this is when this was sent. So hopefully, uh, we got some good stuff here. So let's set this right here. And let's just start from the edge. So first up, Shohei Otani. This is a Topps Chrome Prism Refractor, and it came back in 9.5, so that is incredibly nice. What a year he's having. His contract's going to be crazy when it comes up, and I don't know who's going to be able to afford this guy, but that is a 9.5, so it had three 9.5s and a 9, so the Surface got a 9 on that one. So there's where we are there. Let's move this out of the way and put that right there. Next up. Otani again. So this is the Bowman. It's a 9.5. And it is a 9, 9.5, 9.5, 9.5. So centering on this one is what got a 9. Everything else was 9.5. So that is awesome. And I think the customer who sent the Otani sent like four of the Otani. So, ooh, here we go. A 74.75 Wilt Chamberlain card. So this is incredibly off-centered, and we knew it was when we sent it. So it came back a 5.5, five, so that's an excellent plus. And, I mean, as you can see, this side here is incredibly off-centered, but it's a really clean card. Very nice. So whoever sent the Wilt, hopefully they are uh, happy with the 5.5. Five. But with the centering like that, it's kind of expected that it's going to get less than a 7 anyway. So here is one of my favorite players, incredibly underrated. Mookie Bet. So this is a 14 Tops Heritage, and it got straight nine. So nine across the board on all four categories. So that is an incredibly nice Mookie Betts. I'm sure we were hoping for a nine five or better there, but uh, anyway, we'll have to settle for the nine on that one. Ooh, this is super super cool. This is a 75 Opeachy. Now Opeachy and Tops were two separate releases that year, so. The Opeachy um, Brett and the regular Brett are actually two separate cards, so they look the same, but they're not. So this one came back in 8, near Mint Mint. And for those of you who didn't know, anything before 1980, Beckett won't do subgrades on anymore. It's a, just a straight grade. So this came back um, an 8 with no subs, but incredibly clean card. And you can tell on the Opeachies because the back looks like a different color. If I held a Topps Brett next to this one, you'd easily tell the difference between the Opeachie and the regular. So, anyway, George Brett rookie. Cool. And uh, one thing I really notice on this is that there's no uh, circle print flaws on it. Um, you really don't know how else to describe them. You've probably seen those white circles on especially some of the older Topps cards. So, anyway, cool card. Excellent. George Brett rookie. Another vintage. This is the 1960 Tops Carl Yaskrimski. Incredibly nice card. It is off centered from left to right, and top bottom's not too bad, but it is off centered left to right. Um, this bottom corner here is a little soft, but for a 1960 Yaz rookie, really cool. Yeah, flip it around there. Excellent. Very nice. So, we try to shoot for sevens on some of this vintage stuff, especially pre, you know, 1970 into the 60s. We're, we're looking for sevens, but, you know, the 6.5, the 
they'll probably be happy with that, especially since one of the corners is, is really soft. So here's another Otani. This is another Topps Chrome. This is a refractor here. This came back in 9.5. And the subs are all 9.5 except for centering, and that got in 9. So uh, the way that they do the centering, I'm sure it's... Um, like laser measured so uh, especially with a card like this with no borders sometimes it's a lot harder to determine with our eyes you know if something's centered well or not but this is an incredibly nice card and like i said with the year otani's having um if mike if if judge if aaron judge wasn't having the season he's having otani would probably be the mvp this year in the american league anyway so Ooh, all right. How about this? Especially after the day he had yesterday. Here is a 2017 Donruss Rookie Threads, Pat Mahomes. It came back in nine. And the thing about uh, jersey cards, if you've ever set one off, since they're so thick, the grades are really hard to get a high grade on them. So in, in my opinion, like a nine is quite fine. So the corners and surface got nine, and the centering and edges got nine five. And sometimes it's the edges on these that are really hard to get high grades on. But the, uh, the corners are another big problem, too, because this is a thick boy. It's a very, very thick card. So I'm sure we were, our customer was hoping for a 9.5 on this, and it was close. Two 9.5s and two 9s. So anyway, incredible card. Um, I mean, geez, yesterday, amazing. Just I don't think he's missing uh, Tyreek Hill in the least little bit. Okay, this is what I was afraid of. This is one of the Michaels, and it is questionably authentic. And the centering on this was off left to right. And I know Bob looked at this card, and the, the fakes are so good these days that sometimes even trained eyes, or what we think are trained eyes, can easily be fooled. And Beckett did not want to put their name on this one obviously um, we think it's real um, the only thing that i can suggest the customer do is maybe send this to sgc and see if they'll authenticate it it is well off centered um, the surface looks incredible um, the color is perfect so i mean i i in my opinion i do believe this is probably real but i understand why beckett's so uh, skeptical or reluctant i should say to put their name on a jordan rookie so we're 0 for 1. Now, I'm not seeing any more of these in here like this. So everything else did get graded. Um, so I think our other Jordan is safe. So we move on. Okay, so this is a Jordan pool. And it came back an 8.5 and a 10 on the autograph. And what killed this was the surface. So a lot of the times on incredibly shiny cards, there are print flaws straight off the press like it probably came out of the pack as a 7.5 surface it's probably nothing the customer did to degrade the value of this card but uh, it looks pretty clean to me but they magnify these so much that they can find things wrong with it that uh, just our our eyes and the magnification we have in the store can't find but an 8.5 is just off so that uh, surface destroyed it Centering and edges were both 9.5s. The uh, corners were an 8.5, and the surface was a 7.5. So I'm sure we were hoping for a better grade on that one. And I do believe that's probably Terry's card, but we'll have to check the invoice and see. Okay, so we've got a Kyle Pitts. This is a 21 Legacy. This is Rookie Dare to Tear. And it came back a straight 9, so there are two 9s. So the corners and surface were 9, and the centering and the edges were 9.5. So... Um, one more 9.5 would have bumped this up, and I mean, the corner on here, I'm sure before we sent this off, we saw there's a little whiteness to the top left corner there. Uh, the other corners look okay, but it's pretty obvious on that one there. So if the surface could have got a better grade, it would have made up for that um, corner. So that is a Kyle Pitts 9. Next up, another Otani. So this Otani came back a 9. It was three nines. The one nine five was corners. So this is the rainbow foil version of this card. So I'm sure they're probably a little disappointed in that since the other Otani's graded out a little higher. So we will put that with that customer stack of Otani's and hopefully he'll be happy with the other Otani's and it makes up for it just a bit. So this is an incredibly hard card to get graded. So this is the top's finest masters, uh, Michael Jordan. This is the embossed. And 
the corners for a 7.5. Considering there's only two corners on this card, there must be something pretty obvious that we're missing. I mean, to my eyes, the corners here on this bottom here don't look nearly as bad as probably they see with magnification, but they saw something and gave it a 7.5. So 9 on the surface, 8.5 on edges, and a 9 on centering. So this is an incredibly pretty card, and I'm sure we were hoping for the customers better than an 8, but uh, boy, that corner at a 7.5, you can't really recover when you get one subgrade that bad. So... Here's another Jordan. So this is the SP All-Stars. This is the gold. And what killed this one was surface. So the surface was an 8. But we had a 9 corners, 9 edges, and a 9-5 on centering. So this card here was pretty close to being a 9. But the surface really brought it down. It's, like I said on the last card, it's hard to recover when you get one bad subgrade. Because it's a... Uh, mathematical equation to come up with the final grade not every subgrade is weighted the same so anyway this was an 8.5 so near mint mint i'm sure they'll be a little disappointed in that one because it's not my card and i'm a little disappointed in it next up Trelon burks this is a 21 leaf pro set college autograph and I'm not too sure why the autograph got a 9. That autograph looks pretty clean. I don't see any smudges or anything. So I'm curious as to why it didn't get a 10 on the autograph. But it came back a 9 mint. And it was almost straight 9. So there was a 9-5 surface. The other three subs were 9s. So that was Traylon Burks. And it just goes to show you that cards straight out of the pack don't necessarily mean that they're 9-5s. That's a misconception a lot with... Uh, customers who aren't in the hobby it's not their daily thing right so they think if it comes out of a pack it's obviously in good condition and is, is a gem mint but that's not the case at all all right we're trending upwards here Jordan Alvarez 9.5 so three nine fives the only thing that was a nine was centering on this one here the autograph got a 10 and Jordan has a very cool autograph this is numbered 71 to 75 and that is a very nice card they'll be incredibly pleased with that grade. Next up, we're still trending up. We're still doing good. He didn't have a good game yesterday by any means, but Trey Lance. This is a Jersey Auto out of Panini Spectra. The autograph got a 10, and what's cool about the auto is he did it in a green pen, which matches the green there on that. So that's a cool card. Kind of a Christmassy, Christmassy look here with the Niners colors. So um, three nine fives and a nine. The corners got a nine, and the autograph got a ten. So, incredibly nice card. Uh, congratulations on whoever sent this. I I think this was Brent Battle's card. So, if I remember right, I'm pretty old. I forget things. So, but I think this is Brent Battle's. Next up. Ooh, wow. This is incredibly nice. This is the Luminaries Spark of Light autograph. This is Vladimir Guerrero. It got a 9.5 on the card and a straight 9.5, a true 9.5. So 9.5s across the board on the subs, and the autograph got a 9. And that happens sometimes with um, the paint pens that they use. Uh, for some reason, um, that gets pretty hard on them and because they're not fine-tipped. They're a, they're a, a wider-tipped uh, pen, so I think Beckett uh, takes off for um, maybe it's the aesthetic look to it. They don't like it. Anyway, incredible card. They're going to be super happy with this. Very nice. Okay. And I'm seeing a bummer on the next one here. They went ahead and encased it as authentic. But the next card here, and I can't even see it because it's got this sticker on it. But um, usually when I see one of these, it means that they think the card is authentic, but it's been altered in some way. That could be trim. That could be um, it's been compressed. So sometimes people will use um, screw downs. And have cards in them for years, so when Beckett gets them, they measure the thickness of the card and what it's supposed to be. And if it's not in within a certain parameter, they'll consider it altered because the cardboard's been compressed. And it's incredibly unfair to a collector because they tried their best to keep it mint by putting it in a four-screw screw down. And sometimes it comes back to bite you, and it looks like that's what happened here. And it is a Nolan Ryan rookie card. So what they've said here is they said something about the front has been altered. So they weren't specific with what that was. But um, 
they went ahead and encased it. So it's an authentic card. And what they do is they put altered underneath the authentic there. So um, we do know it is authentic, but um, it's been altered. It's in the case now. So whoever sent this off, I hope uh, they can understand why Beckett thought it was altered. Uh, I wish they would tell us a little bit more about why, because this card's incredibly clean. It's off-centered, like most Nolan Ryan rookies are, but a um, little disappointing that it didn't get a grade. So uh, at least it didn't come back in a semi-rigid and saying that they weren't going to grade it. They did encase it, so at least it does have that going for it. So we'll put that back on there, and we'll explain that to the customer and let them know. And this could be another one that the customer might want to send to SGC just to see if they're not so harsh. Because if it's something incredibly minor on an alteration, uh, sometimes other grading card companies won't be so necessarily harsh. So I'm assuming this is probably the same customer that sent this. So this is a 1969 Topps Nolan Ryan. So this is a second year Ryan. It came back a 6.5, um, excellent to mint plus. Um, incredible color on this card. Um, there's no subs here, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that it's off-centered way left to right. So uh, I'm sure that was a big part of why it's a 6.5. And, you know, without getting this under magnification, there could be some surface flaws. But a 6.5, nonetheless, isn't terrible for a 1969 card. We've got another Otani. So this is a straight true 9.5. This is the Topps Update Rainbow Foil. Incredibly nice. Um, whoever sent off all these Otanis knew what they were doing because I, I think after this season, people are going to st stop and take a look at a guy who's going to win 14, 15 games probably. Um, he's going to have over 200 strikeouts. And, I mean, the home run total on top of everything he does on the mound is incredible. So, very nice card. They should be very pleased with the 9.5 on this. All right, so we're kind of running out of room on my desk. I need a bigger desk. All right, this is a 97-98 Metal Universe. This is a Michael Jordan card. It came back in 8.5. And uh, true to form with the other Jordans, there was one uh, subgrade that's bringing the total grade down. So it was three nines except for corners, and that came back an 8. So that kept this from being a true 9, a straight 9. And I'm sure... Um, if this was Terry's card, it's usually Terry on Jordan cards, um, he'll be a little disappointed in this. So I don't know what the pop report is on this. Um, maybe a lot of this certain card gets um, hit on corners. I know Skybox, Metal Universe, the type of stock that they use to make this card, it's incredibly susceptible to chipping and corner damage. And finally, here it is. It was graded, guys. And I, I just blurred myself over the grade. So, drum roll, please. But 8-5. All right. Wow. That is awesome. Okay. So, centering was an 8-5. Corners a 9. Edges were a 9-5. Surface, 7-5. Can you imagine if that surface was just an 8-5? This could have been a 9 Jordan. This is incredible. This is one of the better grades we've had on Michael. And that's just awesome. Uh, I wonder what the surface problem was that made this a 7.5. I mean, I could probably, you know, there is a white dot above the G there. I wonder if they just absolutely crushed that little print flaw there. I'm surely, surely that wouldn't be the only reason. But this is an incredible card. I don't know who sent this, but they're going to be incredibly happy. I mean, I, I would I guess this would be 7000 probably, um, at an 8.5. Uh, I may be off there. I don't know. But still, awesome card. Very cool. I'm so happy for whoever sent this. 8.5 is, is great. And just the fact that it came back authentic and not altered or questionable authenticity. So that is cool. All right, we've got like four more cards here. So we've got a Panini Illusions, and this is Zion. It came back a nine. So one nine five was centering, the rest were nines. So the other three subs were straight nines. This is numbered out of 99. And sounds like someone's banking on Zion coming back healthy. And I've seen some recent pictures of Zion, and uh, he lost that baby fat. He's, he's looking pretty good. So hopefully this works out for our customers. So 
coming back in nine might be a little disappointing, but nonetheless, super cool. Mac Jones. This is a Panini Mosaic. This is a 295's corners and edges. Uh, surface came back a 9 and centering was a 9, but an overall grade of a 9. So Mac Jones didn't have a very good first game, but young quarterback, always worth investing, especially if you can get him at the right price. Speaking of young quarterbacks, and this one had a better day than Mr. Mac Jones, how about Josh Allen? This is a Panini Luminance Radiance. And there were two 10s on this. So a 10 on edges, 10 on corners, 9 on surface, and a 9.5 on centering. So this came back a 9.5 overall grade. What a pretty card. Just a gorgeous card. Front and back. Just a great, great looking card. So whoever sent this, you should be very pleased. It, it was pretty far off from being a straight 10. Uh, don't get me wrong. But, you know, that's, 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 that's darn good. The subgrades are, are fantastic there. So... That was nice. So, last card. Jason Tatum. This is a Panini status. This is rookie credentials. Incredibly pretty card. Um, just off of a 9.52. So, centering and edges both got 9s. And the corners and surface got 9.5. So, incredibly close to a 9.5. This might be one to send in and get regraded. And just to see if one of the 9s could pop up to a 9.5. Considering this is an incredibly strong 9. This is the best you could get and not get a 9.5. So, a uh, very pretty card. Uh, nice. So, that's it, guys. That is the Beckett order that we sent off. And I want to say that took about four months. Um, don't quote me. But uh, Beckett is getting a little quicker with uh, the return uh, time window. Uh, they're saying allow at least three to four months. So, uh, exciting. If you guys got any questions, drop them down in the comment section. I'd be happy to answer them. If any of these are your cards, I'll either say congratulations or I'm sorry. But uh, that's it. Leave a like, shoot me a comment, and we'll see you guys at Fast Break. Thanks for watching.